Hi, everyone. Welcome to Spill the Tea Radio, where we interview awesome singers, songwriters, and those who influence their lives. Spill the Tea Radio explores the journey, creativity, and inspiration behind the songs. My next guest is an award-winning jazz vocalist and composer. She has been dazzling audiences with her unique sound and dramatic performances. Her crystalline voice and timeless style have led her to stages all around Ontario, Quebec, and Europe. She was the 2019 TD Toronto Jazz Hotspot feature in the Downtown Markham Music Festival. She has recorded two EPs, Minor Ballad, Major Romance in 2014, and Let's Get Cozy in 2020. She was featured here on Spill the Tea Radio on our very first show. She just released two new singles, Mona Lisa in June of 2023, and I Love You for Sentimental Reasons in February of 2024. And there is more music coming from her later this year. So let's spill the tea with Kat Bernardi. Welcome, Kat. Hi, David. Thanks for having me. Anybody that listens to you can pick up that when you speak English, you don't have any accent. But when you say things in Italian, uh, the Italian accent certainly comes through. So uh, we know that your your last name, Bernardi, is, uh, is an Italian name. But what's your connection to uh, the Italian community? Well, I really grew up very connected to the Italian community. So um my father's family is from Toscana, Tuscany, and we grew up very involved with them, um, sort of in like a an Italian Tuscan club community um, that we went to. And that actually kind of got me started with live performance because at all of our events, I used to sing the Italian national anthem and the Canadian national anthem. That's kind of what I was known for doing in the club. And then, you know, here and there, I would play a little set of music for our events. And that really kind of kicks started uh, my live performance career in a lot of ways. And then um, I was very fortunate to actually go back to Italy uh, several times uh, with my family and spend time with family there and get to know family and family friends um, in Italy throughout the years. And I haven't actually been back for a while now just because, you know, life and everything. But uh, but I have so many friends and loved ones in Italy that I'm that I'm in contact with. And Italian music to me has always really spoken to my soul. Um, I grew up listening to a lot of, you know, classic like Pavarotti. Um, and of course, when Andrea Bocelli came out, I just loved his music, especially his Romanza album, which was sort of the album that really kickstarted his career. And um, I love a lot of contemporary pop Italian artists too, like Laura Pausini. Um, so I've just kind of always sung Italian music. And for the very early part of my career, I didn't really gig a lot in Italian. And then it was really in the last few years that I started saying, you know what, I can bring this to the table, I can bring out this different side of me. And ever since I have, it's it's really been sort of steamrolling, things have been popping up for me and happening for me. So I'm really glad that I decided to sort of dive into that part of who I am. Now trace the roots back uh, between mom and dad uh, back to Italy for us? Well, my mom is actually not Italian. Um, so growing up, I remember sort of thinking that my mom was because my mom speaks fluent Italian um, to the point that when we're in Italy, she can communicate with everyone. Like no one really can tell that she isn't sort of a native Italian speaker. Um, but she grew up with a lot of Italian relatives and she went to Italy several times as a youth and went to school there. So she kind of grew up ingrained in the culture, but her um, nationality is Canadian. Her parents are Ukrainian and Irish. And my dad, uh, he is, his family is from uh, Toscana from Tuscany, my nonno Araldo and my nonna Flora, they're actually both from two neighboring towns in Toscana, sort of in the Garfagnana region. And uh, my nonno used to play the organ at some of the neighboring churches uh, in, in, the, in the area. So they grew up on these two like, you know, side by side mountains. And my nonno came to Canada um, in the 50s. And then eventually, my nonno and nonna were married by proxy, and he brought her over. 
And, um, and then, you know, they started their family here and eventually they brought over both of their mothers as well. So it was a very bustling house with, you know, the two, the two grandmothers, Nono and Nonna, and then, you know, my, and then they had three boys, the oldest of which is my dad. What is it about um, Italian music that attracts you to that uh that genre of music. We know that, you know, French, Italian, and Spanish are known as the the romance, the romantic languages. What is it about the Italian music that, that draws you to it? I think it's got to be that sort of classical um, influence that is in so much Italian music. You won't hear it as much in Italian pop, which is um, sort of a very popular genre in Italy, like hip hop is coming up as a popular genre. But I would say that like rock, you know, the power ballads, the Italians are very much known for their contemporary power ballads, which I also love. Um, but there's always, uh, there has always been this tradition of like this classical influence um, in Italian music, even contemporarily with artists like Andrea Bocelli, who I brought up before. Um, so I think I, I, there's something about that classical influence that I really, really like. Um, I like kind of meshing in a little bit of a classical sound into jazz and into pop. Um, and there is something very special about singing in Italian, like as a vocalist, the way that the vowels are just so open and round, it really is just perfect for, for a vocalist to sort of emote through those big, beautiful round vowels. Um, there's just something really special about it. <laughs> and so what have you been up to since the last time we, we spoke? Uh, we, we featured a couple of your songs, of course, one of my personal favorites is let's get cozy which is a um a christmas song you wrote it for christmas but that was you know the one that we we featured uh on the on the first show uh, what have you been up to lately lots of uh gigs lots of performances and uh, you've been writing some music as well I've been working on a new single. I was awarded a micro grant award from the Mississauga Arts Council to uh, put together uh, my newest single. It's called Muovermi. It's an Italian song that's going to be coming out at near the end of the summer, close to my Ital Fest performance, and also to record an accompanying music video to go with it. So I'm really pumped about that. That's been sort of top of mind for me. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of what I've been up to. Now, your album uh, name... Is there an English translation for that? For uh, the single, the Muovermi? Yes. Yes, there is, but it, it, it doesn't directly translate. And I'll tell you why. I might get a little language nerd for a second. So um, moving in Italian, muovere, to move, it's actually a reflexive verb. So <laughs> you can't just say like, I move. You have to say, I move myself. So muovermi, it means like I'm I'm moving myself. But I guess in English, uh, the like a closer to a direct translation would just be like on the move sort of thing, like I'm on the go. Mm -hmm. And uh, that song is sort of about that like perpetual need that I have. And I know a lot of artists um, and creatives and even non-creatives and non-artists have that need to always be working towards the next goal to always be on the go and being busy, being productive. Um, and also as a means to sort of move past some of the more trying and difficult uh, times in life as well. So that's what that song is about. The song we're going to feature today is, uh, is an arrangement that you've uh, put together. When you're starting with a, a, a classic like Mona Lisa that we're going to feature today and you may, and you do a new arrangement to it, What's the process that you go through when you're already starting with something that is fully formed and very popular and everybody recognizes it that is remotely uh, connected to music and you rearrange it? What's that process like? Well, for this song in particular, this has been a, a slightly different process um, because not only is it a rearrangement, I also did an original translation. So the original lyrics of Mona Lisa are English, um, you know, probably the most popular version of the song by Nat King Cole. Yeah. And Natalie Cole did a gorgeous rendition of it on her Unforgettable album, which I love so much. Um, but yeah, it's so I also, you know, translated the lyrics and it's the song is so different that 
in fact, a lot of the times when I perform it, people don't even realize that it's that it's a cover or an arrangement. They think it's it's a completely original piece. And in a, in a lot of ways, it is. Um, it's certainly an adaptation. I mean, you know, the melody is almost the same. Um, but, you know, the chords are very different and it's a totally different feel. So usually when Mona Lisa is performed, it's performed like as a pretty straight ahead jazz ballad. Um, but this is definitely more on this sort of like acoustic film score, um, Italian classical sort of side of things. So it's a totally different vibe, um, you know, and, and the process, you know, you asked about the process. It's, it's a song that I've always loved. I've always really, really loved this song and Thomas Francis and I arranged it together. I think it was maybe a year before uh, the COVID lockdown, because I was doing um, a live recording, a, a live recording show. And we, we did the arrangement right before that. And, um, and we were really inspired by Ennio Morricone, who is a wonderful film composer who wrote, you know, music for, you know, like the good, bad and the ugly Cinema Paradiso, like he's written so many iconic film scores and I've always loved his music. So this song, you know, it, it's very, I mean, I don't want to say it's reminiscent of Ennio Morricone because I love him and admire him so much that I, I couldn't say such a thing, but it was inspired by his style. Um, so yeah, so we, we kind of started from a place of saying, okay, we want to give it more of that like Italian, that sort of filmic dramatic feel and then um and then the translation came afterwards and I translated the lyrics with some help from friends in Italy um and family here as well there were actually there was a team of like six of us so I wrote the first draft of the lyrics and then I sent it to actually my parents and my parents took a look at it and sort of changed a couple things and then we sent it to some people in Italy in Rome we have uh, Alessandro the De Vecchi and his father, uh, Antonio De Vecchi, and they helped us with that too, just to put the, you know, to make sure that it really was uh, well translated and that it was saying exactly what we wanted it to say. So that was sort of the process with that. Let's get into one of the songs that Kat wrote. Uh, this song is a new arrangement for this song. And uh, why this one? What's special about this song for you? We're going to find out right after we play it. So here is the song by Cat Bernardi and it's called Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, ti han chiamato. Sei la donna col sorriso mistico. Perché sei sola che ti hanno dato questa colpa per quel tuo strano sorriso da Mona Lisa. Sorridi per tentare un amante Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa by Cat Bernardi. Cat, 
why we talked a little bit about uh when you do arrangements for songs that people may be f- familiar why this one and what's special about this song for you i'm really glad you asked me that because this is a really special song for me so firstly i was introduced to it through my very favorite album of all time, which is Natalie Cole's Unforgettable album. And ever since I heard it, there was just this really haunting and beautiful quality about the song that always really stuck out to me. And um, I just sort of had it in the back of my mind, like maybe this is something I would maybe record one day. Um, But the other thing that really struck me about it was Mona Lisa, the the painting. I mean, it's an Italian painting. It's it's a painting uh, by an Italian artist um, you know, during a very influential period of Italian art. So I thought, you know, it would be cool for it to have um, an Italian rendition. Um, so I thought I would write one. And, you know, to further that a little bit, and the significance of fine art to me, is that my nonno, Araldo, um, he, unfortunately, he, he did pass away um, a little over a year ago. But he was an artist and he was so passionate about working with his hands. You know, he he painted. I actually have some of his paintings um, around my house. He painted. He started uh, one of the first gesso factories in Toronto um, with some of his relatives. He he made sculptures for years, beautiful, beautiful sculptures. And uh, my nonna also did like painted the eyes on the sculptures, which is a very detailed um, work. And um, my grandma also on my mom's side is is a painter as well. And she's a wonderful painter. Um, and my nonno in particular, he also, he worked into his like 80s. How do people find out more about you, uh, Kat? Uh, where can they find you on your website, your socials, so they can keep track of all of the gigs that you are going to be appearing at and especially the new music that you have coming up? So the best way is definitely my Instagram page at Kat, C-A-T, Bernardi with an I, music. At Kat Bernardi Music is my Instagram. I post on there about all of my gigs. Um, but I would hope that people can also check out my website, catbernardimusic.com. And I also have a band camp page. So please do check out my band camp page as well. We have been in conversation with Kat Bernardi. Kat, thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for letting me spill some tea today. <laughs>